In Nazi Germany, the vast majority of the German people submitted to their fascist leadership, and stood silent in the face of their government's brutal oppression of Jews and other minorities. But some small groups resisted. One such group was the White Rose, whose members risked all and paid with their lives. Today, the White Rose, including its most celebrated members, Sophie and Hans Scholl. Remains essential to how the German people comprehend the Nazi era and understand themselves. When Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime came to power in 1933, it brought welcome prosperity to a land devastated by unemployment and inflation. The regime's increased military spending gave a boost to the economy. Hitler's popularity skyrocketed as the Third Reich continued to gain power. It employed aggressive propaganda to spur nationalistic fervor. By 1939, in the midst of World War II, German nationalism had reached an all-time high. Encouraged by rallies, promotional films, and Hitler Youth organizations, younger Germans especially embraced Hitler's ideals. Under Hitler. Germany officially stood one people, one empire, one leader. Outraged by the atrocities conducted by their fascist government, a number of medical students and one of their professors at the University of Munich formed what became known as the White Rose. The students came from middle-class German families and shared a philosophy influenced by the philosophers Laozi. Aristotle, Goethe, Novalis, and the teachings of the Christian Church. The White Rose produced and distributed anonymous leaflets and painted anti-Nazi graffiti on the campus of the University of Munich. These leaflets detailed the Nazis' atrocities and called for the German people to rebel against their government. Readers were asked to join in passive resistance to the National Socialist Party through the copying and redistribution of the leaflets. Producing the leaflets, six in total, was difficult and risky. The government considered all such activity treason and virtually eliminated opposition by prosecuting and severely punishing resistance. Even obtaining paper was difficult due to rationing. You couldn't go to the post office and buy a hundred postal stamps for your envelopes. You would become suspicious if you did this in several post offices. The post office would know and would start notifying the Gestapo. The leaflets had to be duplicated by a hand-cranked mimeograph machine. Distribution was also challenging. Some of the leaflets were mailed, while others were left in public places such as telephone booths. Because members of the White Rose suspected that the Gestapo was opening mail, they sometimes sent leaflets to themselves to check that they were reaching their intended audience. Even being the recipient of a leaflet could place someone under suspicion. Most recipients of these leaflets. Turned them into the police because they didn't know whether the people who sent these were honest anti-Nazi people, whether they were actually Nazi officials who wanted to test you. Since citizens were encouraged to report any anti-government activity, almost sixty percent of the White Rose's mailings were turned into the Gestapo. Despite these obstacles, over a period of nearly two years, the White Rose successfully produced and distributed six leaflets. On February 18, 1943, Sophie and Hans Scholl, neglecting to inform the other members of the White Rose as was customary, entered a building at the University of Munich while the other students were in class. While the halls were empty, they distributed copies of the sixth leaflet outside of each classroom. They then carried a sheaf of leaflets to the building's atrium, 
where Sophie threw them off a balcony into the courtyard below. Sophie and Hans did this in a moment of joy and what's called in German Übermut, that frivolous act and not thinking of the consequences. That's, I have no other explanation. It was probably the most foolish thing they did. Unfortunately for Sophie and Hans, a janitor caught them in the act. When they were arrested by the Gestapo, a draft of a seventh leaflet was found in Hans's pocket. The handwriting on the draft was identified as that of Christoph Probst, who was brought in for questioning. Four days later, all three were brought to trial in front of the Volksgerichtshof, the People's Court established to try offenses against the German state. Judge Roland Freisler acted as judge, prosecutor, and jury. The three defendants were found guilty of high treason and executed by guillotine the same day. Later that year, the Gestapo hunted down and captured Alexander Schmorell, Willi Graf, and Professor Kurt Huber. The three were tried and executed for high treason. Before his execution, Professor Huber wrote to his son, I died for Germany's freedom, for truth, and honor. Faithfully, I served these three until my very last heartbeat. Despite their martyrdom, the members of the White Rose had little immediate impact. There was no mass outcry after the executions. Copies of the sixth leaflet found their way to Allied forces, and millions of leaflets were airdropped over Germany. Still, the majority of Germans were compliant with the Nazi regime through the remainder of the war. When the White Rose is spoken of today, it is most often in connection with the names Sophie and Hans Scholl. The siblings have become icons in the history of nonviolent resistance, depicted again and again in popular media and historical literature. Yet, they were only two of the White Rose activists. People respond to events in history by finding good stories. Sophie and Hans, as brother and sister, are often perceived as the leading dramatic heroes of this particular story. But it was all the members of the White Rose who fought for their beliefs. The real legacy of this movement is its impact on society today. Throughout the world, the White Rose stands as a symbol of courage. But in Germany, the impact is more profound. The White Rose movement not only provides an example of righteous Germans, but also helps ordinary Germans to answer the agonizing question of why more of them did not resist. There were people who resisted in a variety of ways, whether it was doing something very small, such as writing or distributing a leaflet, but there were also serious and severe consequences for these acts, and people who chose to resist were punished accordingly if they were caught, and such consequences also answer the question of why didn't more people resist. They didn't resist because they saw what would happen if they did. The German national identity is painfully connected with its Nazi legacy. Memorials, national events, and legislation ensure that the German people will not forget the past atrocities. But the memory of the White Rose gives nuance to this guilt. It's especially important for young people in Germany today to think back and know that not everyone in their country's past was compliant with Nazi policies. Um, and I think that the history and the story of the White Rose actually helps people believe that there were indeed people who were willing to give their life to fight evil. Today, memorials throughout the world recall the brutal acts committed by the German people during the Nazi era. In stark contrast stands the White Rose Memorial. The brave revolutionaries it represents are an important reminder of righteous Germans. Throughout Germany and the world, the White Rose stands as a symbol of the courage of the human spirit.